Welcome to the show. My name is Ron, and I'm here to help you to learn how to meditate. That is my goal. Um, and a great way to learn how to meditate is to read something thought-provoking. And we're going to get to thought-provoking in just a moment. I have a little bit of a rant to start the show with today. <laughs> I was listening to the Benny show this morning <clears throat> and another company has gone the route of Bud Light and it happens to be the Dorito chip company. For some reason they felt the need to boost their ESG score so they went and hired a spokesperson Who is it? Transgender pedophile. Simply amazing. Mm. Now, in their in the quick backlash to that, they realized after a few days that that was a mistake, and they let that person go. But still, we need to let these companies know that that mistake can't be made. We are the majority, and it's a simple matter of just not buying their products anymore. And I say that from a standpoint of, here in Canada, I get the, the flavor of uh, sweet chili heat. My go-to purchase when I need a bag of chips. But in light of uh, their decision to hire a transgender pedophile, even if it was only for a few days, I will never buy another bag of Doritos chips, period. Let somebody know that. Let, tell, tell a friend. Benny, Benny's show has a huge following. Yeah. There's my rant. <laughs> Let's get to thought-provoking. From Romans chapter 8. And it's chock, this is chock full of good stuff today. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory. For we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. And then now in parentheses, if we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something, we don't have yet, we must wait patiently and confidently. And then the writer goes on, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Amen? Amen. We'll give it a little context here from our daily bread, and then we'll just go back in there and pick out a few tidbits. Tongue-tied in prayer. When my baby brother 
underwent surgery. I was concerned. My mother explained that tongue tie was a condition he was born with, and that without help, his ability to eat and eventually to speak would be hindered. Today we use the term tongue-tied to describe being at a loss for words or too shy to speak. Sometimes we can be tongue-tied in prayer, not knowing what to say. Our tongues tie up in spiritual cliches and repetitive phrases. We arrow our emotions heavenward, wondering if they will reach God's ears. Our thoughts zigzag along an unfocused path. Writing to first century Roman believers in Christ, the Apostle Paul addressed what to do when we struggle to know how to pray, inviting us to find help from the Holy Spirit. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The concept of help here is to carry a heavy load, and wordless groans indicates an interceding presence as the Spirit carries our needs to God. When we're tongue-tied in prayer, God's Spirit helps shape our confusion, pain, distraction into the perfect prayer that moves from our hearts to God's ears. He listens and answers, bringing the exact kind of comfort we may not have known we needed until we asked him to pray for us. Amen. Wow. There is something to meditate on. So just picking out a few tidbits here from our reading today. For we know that all creation has been groaning. And, to go along with that, we too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children. So creation is groaning, and we're waiting for our full rights. Well, you really need to get a hold of this book by Timothy Alberino, Earthright. It explains that very well. Creation is groaning because our elder siblings have confiscated our rights to rule this world. That's, that is, that is something. Number two, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us. And the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. I often hear people praying to God, Oh Lord, give me the right lottery numbers, and when I win, I will uh, give a whole bunch of it to the church. <laughs> God don't need our money. <laughs> so, so you can quit praying for the lottery numbers. Well, here's another one. <clears throat> oh, Heavenly Father, heal me from all my illnesses. In the bulk of the cases of our illnesses, we're in complete control of that. Eat less, eat better, exercise, and a lot of the illnesses will take care of themselves. We don't need to pray about that. Take action. 
So then what should we pray for? Well, a lot of times, like the Bible says, we, or like our daily devotional says, we just use cliches and, and words that don't really mean anything. So maybe ask the Holy Spirit to pray for you. Because the Spirit that God gave us when we, be, when we became servants of Jesus, He knows. So, there is something to meditate on. Amen? Amen. The word of the day is perpetrated. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.